Gentlemen, it's 7 o'clock. Welcome to the Planning Commission for the City of Hudson for Thursday, February 13th. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Discussion and possible action on November 21st, 2013 minutes and December 12th, 2013 mini meeting minutes. I think we've all received copy of the um, minutes. Is there any questions, changes, or additions? I'll move for approval. Second. Second. We had a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, item three, discussion and possible action of development plans for a 1,144-square-foot building addition to 422 Second Street, Spring Creek Dental Office. Dr. Melissa, Melissa Deeg. Dennis? Um. 422 Second Street is the where the chapters books bookstore currently is, or the building immediately north of the parking lot office on the east side of Second Street. What's being proposed is a 1,144 square foot addition, and also remodeling the first and second floors of the existing building. Um, one of the issues <coughs> is brought before staff in regards to this uh, project was uh, storm drainage. Um, a lot of the old buildings in downtown Hudson don't have very proper storm drainage. Uh, fortunately, the developer has cooperated with uh, comments by the city staff to incorporate infiltration on the east side uh, of the building. Uh, also, uh, a lot of efforts being made to clean up that area so it'll look a lot nicer than what it currently does. Um, Mr. Scott Maurer, the project uh, architect, is here tonight to present the plans. So Scott, if you want to take the floor, if you want to come up here and present the plans, so thank you. Scott Mauer with Progressive Architecture, 4920 Otter Lake Road, White Bear Lake, Minnesota. I'm still a Packer fan. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> just to orientate you, and if you guys can't see, I don't know, yell and I'll try to move the thing back, but Second Street is right here. The city parking lot would be right here. Um, I'm going to call it the music store is right through here. Um, and then here's the back street of the back alley. <coughs> right now, City Hall is probably right about here where my hand is. Um, <coughs> the site is tight. It's 25 feet wide, so we, we don't have much to work with. Um, with that said, though, the existing building architecturally gives us a lot to work with. So um, that was kind of fun to do, exciting to do for us. Um, what we're thinking of doing with the existing building facade is pretty much leave everything as is. We're going to take off the old awnings. Um, these windows have some really nice leaded glass up above so we can see it. We're not going to see the 20 year old awnings or whatever is there. And then remove the awning here and just leave the existing signage band. I think that was there <coughs> prior to having that awning put up. We'd expose that and we'd be able to see that. We're going to put some lights that would cast down on this part of the building. And really that's about it. Clean up the brick and, and, and let the existing architecture stand. The addition off the back <coughs> would be from here back. Um, it is a flat roof. Um, we looked at pitched roofs and some other things and there gets to be issues of what do we do with the water that's running on the roof. It's going to be dumping on cars that are parked in the parking lot and, and it, uh, the water then would be dumping on right away on the city parking lot <clears throat> and that's not really acceptable. Um, probably for you guys as well as, as for us so we decided to go to a flat roof. Um, we are using lap siding and then some other flat paneled siding, hardy board, um, or smart siding is the layman's term. <clears throat> and uh, we're still expressing it like it's a new or a contemporary building a little bit. It's not going to be a hundred year old building, so we're not going to try to disguise it that much. Um, we will let some of the materials flow over into the existing facade. Um, these are the actual colors that we're planning on using and hopefully it'll be an acceptable um, 
addition to the city. Um, as far as <clears throat> the site and what we did to, to work on that, there's some existing parking spots on the back side of the site. We're going to pave it so it's a little bit ne neater. It's, it's gravel right now. Um, and of course, then we have the big hill that runs right into here. We talked to the neighbor and he goes, well, it's pretty dry, except there's a river usually that flows two or three times a year right through his basement. So we're, there's a lot of drainage issues on this site. Um, what we decided to do to help assist with the drainage is we put a retention area, layman's terms, rain garden, something like that, that will hold that water, or at least some of that water, and then it will take its natural path and flow out and down to the city street. We, we did look, <clears throat> our first thought was to try to go to a storm drain system. There's no storm sewer on 2nd Avenue. There might be one up here, but water doesn't go uphill. So um, this we thought was probably the best answer to what we're trying to do. This flat roof, we are going to drain it over here, and that water will run in to this retention area. So again, we're not dumping water directly on the city lot. So when water starts to drip, ice won't form, and this will hopefully be where the ice will form and things like that. Um, other than that, <clears throat> um, pretty much this is all going to be the office. The second story is future. Um, it'll be the doctor's office, maybe a staff lounge, things like that. Downstairs will be patients pretty much in the back, some support in the middle, a waiting area up in front. We are going to put an accessible ramp inside the building so the whole building will be accessible to the public. Um, any other questions, I'll be happy to answer. And Scott, maybe you just want to mention the existing building materials on the south side, oh. it's a concrete block. Oh, yeah, this is a, so it's not a, a concrete block building. We are thinking of <clears throat> just fixing up the block work that's there and then repainting it. So uh, not too much, but then we'll try to paint it in a color scheme that will complement the colors should complement each other and also complement the existing brick that's out in the front. <coughs> Looks like a nice addition. Yeah, thanks. Nice. thanks. Very nice. I have a question. Can you explain the building materials again that you're okay, using on sure. the outside? You have the nice brick and then what are you doing on the addition? Okay, and this is an existing concrete block <coughs> for the most part. And this is hardy board siding, <coughs> lap siding. Mm -hmm. And actually, I forgot <coughs> to mention, <coughs> instead of just keeping it all the same six inch exposure, six inch exposure, what we do a lot of times is we'll have a four inch exposure, two eighths, a 10, a four. And it's a little well, rambling or, <coughs> and it's, it's, it's a little, it, makes, it gives the building a little more interest. And usually when you see that, most people go, oh, what's that? It doesn't look like lap siding, it just looks like some kind of a different material. This material is also, it's a hardy board, but it's just a flat panel. And it'll have battens in it, so it'll look like uh, kind of a raised panel. So that's not a garage door? No, no, <laughs> it's not a garage door. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to picture this rain garden. Yeah. Okay. Where is the parking? Okay, I'm looking at I'm looking at this. The parking lot is there. Way at the top right. of the hill. And then you have it paved. This is paved up here. Right. And then there's, there's 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 grass in between that. There is. Oh, on the stairs. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. There's an existing I, stair here. We well, used half the lot's grass currently. Yeah. Two I'm thirds. Just put it yeah. in my head. I can't it's Two thirds see it. of its grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The existing building goes to here. So now we're putting on the addition. So there's a little <coughs> there's a hill of grass. Oh, okay. I know it's in my, I got it. There's a yep. little red, there's a little red um, garage like shed there too, right? Right. No, back behind. Am that's I too on far the next, off? That's the next door property coming okay. yeah. north. That's All right, I'm there. Well, so basically, because of the fence on the south side yeah. of the property. So. 
we'll go, we'll go down the hill and then slightly back up again so all the water will... And then it'll avoid the buildings, the water, the drainage. We, yeah. Hopefully. Gosh, we hope. That's your yeah. plan. <clears throat> Yes. <laughs> well, that would be my question to take along with that is, okay, you say you're, it's going to go into the parking lot. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to have there? Are we going to have a, 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 Ice. a, a lake running on that? Um, is it well, spread out? Are you going to channel it? Are you yeah. going to focus it? What are you going to do there to make it so it does not become a hazard? To okay. Whatever you want right. to say. Well, let me I point out right now, right now the water runs right down and onto the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, and <clears throat> we have nowhere else to go but to the parking lot. So I we have that. to drain towards the parking lot. Now let's figure out a way to make it work. And that's really, this, this rain garden is really more of a, a collection area. It's going to handle small rainfalls. And then when you get over a couple inches, it's, it is going to go to the parking lot. There's, there's just no way but around it. Is it just going to run out and spread out like a delta across right. the whole but parking lot? Or what, what's, what's no, going to happen? It, it, it should follow the same path and would, would stay on this side of the parking lot and then head out towards the street. As it does now. As it does now. <coughs> what, what, we, what I don't want to do is to have it um, too confined because then it gets to be a big flume of water. It's actually better, kind of like what we've shown, is to spread it out a little bit, so then you get a, you're gonna get the same volume, but you're gonna have it spread over a larger area. And then one of the other <clears throat> things that the retention pond will do is, you know, the two months from now when you get a little bit of runoff, hopefully it'll freeze, especially from the roof and the freezing and the thawing and the ice buildup will happen here, rather than if we'd put the scupper over here, okay. that that would be a, okay. a The city a engineer, problem. Tom Suey, and I have been working with them to try it. We realize there's no perfect system on this storm drainage in this particular location. This is about the best we can do. Lisa South facing. Well, I mean, it just, you know, since you're adding on and, and changing some things, would now would be the time to fix it if, if there was a time not, to fix it. But, I, but what you're saying is there's no real way to fix it. This is the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is about as good as we can fix it right. without having a new storm drain brought in on 2nd Avenue. Right. So. Any other questions? City staff recommends approval. I move for approval. Is Based on city staff recommendations. Is there a second? And I'll second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Jenny, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, item four, we're gonna we're gonna move down if that's okay with people. We'll move it to the uh, end of the <coughs> agenda because the gentleman's not here tonight from Verizon, but we can talk about that after we get to the other two items. Uh, the next item on the agenda, anybody have any object objection to that? Dis the other item, the next item is discussion, possible action on amendments to the City uh, Hudson Miscible Zoning Code, Chapter 255, in regard to breweries, brew pubs, wineries, and manufacturers, distillers in B3, Central Business District, B2, and General Business District. There's a draft ordinance that was referred to the City Attorney uh, last summer. Uh, it uh, took a while for us to get through. This is an issue that, uh, due to the complexity of state statutes, and uh, it's an uh, issue that I know Kathy spent a lot of time on to really try to understand the issues, get through the requirements, uh, uh, turn the floor over to her, but uh, essentially, <coughs> Uh, what she is she had provided an explanation of the different permits mm -hmm. um, and then also a revised draft ordinance again it's all subject as a draft ordinance subject to change uh, but let's let Kathy provide her comments sure um, I thought it was important you're trying to zone 
property for these types of activities and put appropriate uses in appropriate places. And so I thought it was important for you to understand what each, the activities that these businesses are allowed, authorized to do under the state, per, the state statutes and the permits that the state issues, or if the city issues various licenses, it was important for you to know that. Because really you're looking at the way these are set up, if you, if you read even the summary, these different types of, let's just call them liquor licensed businesses are allowed under the state permits to do, as you can see, a pretty wide variety of things. And so the city doesn't have the authority to, once someone's issued a state permit, say for a brewery, to say, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, if it's authorized under the state permit that governs. And same with just any, even a liquor license that the city issues under that license, they're authorized to do whatever the state statute says they can do. What the city can do is zone. I mean, any business that comes in has to comply with the city's zoning. So that's why I thought it was important for you to understand when a business comes to you and says they have a brewery permit or that's what they're going for, you need to understand what activities they'll be authorized to do under that permit. Then you can determine where it's appropriate for that type of business to locate. That's the whole reason for giving you all this information. And as you can see, it's, it's not really all that logical. Um, it's just kind of, well, let's just face it, a product of lobbying by various different business interests, in my opinion. So I tried to summarize it. The brewery is primarily a brewery. There's no limit on production of um, fermented malt beverages, which is beer. But in addition to manufacturing, brewing beer, they are authorized to also serve beer on the premises for either off sale, which is like, a, you know, in the packages that you take away, or on, serving on the premises. So that's, in my view, I mean, that's a couple of different types of uses. The manufacturing part is likely to be mostly industrial, although this operating under this permit, they can also serve alcohol or beer, either off sale or on sale. Um, they can also operate a restaurant on site. Now something for you to consider, the city is, well, where are we going to want a business that can both manufacture and distribute beer, but can also be serving beer on and off sale and operate a restaurant on that premises? Just because they're authorized to operate a restaurant on the premises, doesn't necessarily mean that if they locate in an industrial, you know, that operation of that restaurant would comply with the city's ordinance. So in my view, if you would locate a brew, you know, say they were industrial zone because you, you determine that's primarily a manufacturing or has truck traffic, that type of business, if your zoning ordinance doesn't allow restaurants, then even though they're authorized under the state permit to operate a restaurant, they would still need to locate in a place that's consistent with your zoning. So those are the types of things you need to be thinking about when you um, decide how to zone these different businesses. Now maybe it's not a problem. I ha didn't actually review the existing industrial uses, but if restaurants are allowed in an industrial district, then that wouldn't be a problem. If they're only allowed in a light industrial, then you know maybe that would be the place. Those are the kinds of issues you need to be thinking about um, with respect to a brewery. It's a combination of, in my view, industrial and commercial. And 
just because they're authorized to do certain things doesn't mean that the business will come in and want to do those things. You just need to understand that, at least with regard to alcohol sales, beer, wine, what have you, they will be authorized to do certain things on that premises. Um, so we can go through those. I mean, the, the, the memo basically described brew pub is a little bit different. You probably have maybe been to some in the Twin Cities. It's a, there's a limit on production, 10,000 barrels. They're required to have, I believe, a, a restaurant and a Class B uh, beer license from the city. So in that situation, the city would control, the, they would need their brew pub permit. They, but they couldn't get it from the state without a city license. So the city has some control with respect to that. That just, you know, we can go, they can have basically a serve, they can also get an intoxicating liquor license for use only at their restaurant connected with <coughs> the brew pub. So, that seems to be a little less on the manufacturing, you know, industrial side, more towards commercial because it's a combination required to have a restaurant and there's a limit on production. Um, winery, again, that's a state permit. Um, they can have either an off sale liquor license, meaning packages take away, or an on-sale class B <coughs> intoxicating liquor license, but not both. And if they're issued a class B, it's only for um, serving wine. There's uh, the other thing, uh, there's also subject to closing hours. Breweries aren't, but as I said in the memo, I think the city could adopt ordinances. They would be separate from your zoning ordinances, but under our, the city's intoxicating liquor, they could require those to be, I think, subject to the same closing hours as other similarly licensed premises. Um, Manufacturers is simply what, uh, I know a question came up, why do I put distillers? Because that's the word people understand, but under the statute, they're called, they, must, they have to get a manufacturer's permit. There's really no reference to distillers. In no. the state statute, they're called manufacturers. Yeah, they're called manufacturers, and I thought it was important to use the terms that are used in the statute so that everyone understands, at least with respect to the service of alcohol, what they're allowed to do on that premises. Mm -hmm. So that was the reasoning behind giving you all that information. Um, I summarized it in the front to just, uh, the back includes more detailed, kind of a laundry list of authorized activities. I didn't include any of there's also regulations on who, for example, a brewery or a brew pub or a winery can distribute to and how much. I thought the city is mostly concerned in terms of zoning with what are the activities that are going to occur on the premises. Yes, if they're manufacturing something, that's going to obviously involve some kind of truck traffic, but separating ownership and sales to various different types of wholesalers, I didn't think that would concern you in terms of zoning. Um, so that's kind of a summary of what you're looking at. I think what, the, what we did with the ordinance was to change the definitions to be consistent, use the same terms and be consistent with the <coughs> um, statutory definitions. And then, really, the locations I didn't do anything with. That was pretty much prepared by uh, Denny, and you folks discussed that at your last meeting. But the way he has it set up, if you look on the second page, um, all of the, well, the, everything in the general bis business district, B2, you know, 
brewery, brew pub, manufacturer, winery would require a conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. um, so they could locate there, but this, that would give the opportunity for the city, plan commission <coughs> included, to review, okay, what exactly is their business? What's gonna be the traffic? What's gonna be the type of activity going on there? And tailor any conditions of the permit to that business if you decide to allow it. Uh, that's true for both the general business and the central business district. Then light industrial <coughs> uh, brew pub wouldn't be permitted <coughs> and the others would be upon issuance of a certificate of compliance. And I think, does that come to Council or is yes. that okay? Yeah. It, it but does no not public require, hearing. It, you're correct. Okay. Is this appropriate to ask a question now at this point? Sure. Yeah, definitely. So in the business central business district, Denny, we've got uh, a brewery. Do you, do you feel? Um, and again, we have some limits. We're limiting it by the square footage, correct? Yeah, that's correct. <clears throat> do you think it's appropriate to have a brewery in downtown Hudson? Well, I guess that was the question. I mean, yep. there's requests by brewers, distillers, I'll use the word distillers because that's a exactly. term that was used. Um, yep. and we've had contacts on brew pubs. We've had uh, contacts on wineries. All right. of them have at one point or another wanted to be in downtown Hudson to be connected to the tourist <coughs> traffic within downtown Hudson. So we discussed it originally was that uh, even though we you know, there's no commitment to moving this um, ordinance forward, the agreement was to limit them to three in the central business district to yep. three thousand square foot on production <coughs> and four thousand square feet on the tasting room area, and that would be their maximum limit. So if they come in and ask for a permit, then they have to fall within those limits. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the discussions on the production was how do we monitor, how do we control, how many the state permits would control that, but in the local ordinances, are we gonna go in and try to verify how many barrels or gallons over a specified period of time? And the discussion at that time was, no, we aren't gonna do that. So this is, so we really didn't change that, particularly other than the brew pubs we did not yeah. put into the industrial areas. So, <clears throat> as this has come through past I don't know how many, like the fourth time now we started, we've been looking at this. I, the more I've thought about it, I, I don't have a problem so much with like a brew pub concept. It, to me, it's like a Water Street brewery or any other restaurant that brews their own beer within. But this, I'm starting to, I'm more leaning against the possibility of distilleries, wineries. I, I, don't, I don't think that's what we need. I mean, to answer your question, Alan, and I know it was a hype, maybe a hypothetical in a way, but no, I don't think that's what we need. I think if it's a restaurant-based type pub, brew pub, like an example I gave, it's different. <coughs> but when we start, you know. Well, not to disagree with you, but I was thinking more of the brewery, not the winery. I, you know, I just, you know, if, if, because of the restrictions that apply or the non-restrictions that a brewery has, according to this, is they can be open all night long. They can, where a winery, if I read this right, has to be closed. Yeah. Has to be closed. Right. So there is a difference, at least the way I see it, um, from an unenforced uh, brewery that can be open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, mm -hmm. to a winery that has to has to be closed between 9 p.m. and 8 a.m. Big difference, I think, from traffic and what can be going on and, and possibly the smell? Well, I think the winery, too, when, we, when this came to our attention, we, it was a possibility of a restaurant mix, if I recall. It wasn't just a sure. sole winery. So, not, and yes, wineries are a little more tamed, or I could possibly modify my thought there, but breweries, I just think, are for sure... In the downtown yes, area. Yes, it's not appropriate in the downtown area. You want to put it industrial in the industrial area, I don't... Like we have now. Yes, I don't have a problem with that, but in downtown, I don't, I don't want to... I don't think I would like to see that. And uh, Denny's argument, not sorry, I'm not going to argue for you, Denny, but the 3,000 square foot is a pretty limiting 
Well, that, that, that's the way we were in a previous discussion was how do you, if you're going to allow these types of establishments, facilities in the downtown area, how do you try to limit those to fit within the context of the downtown commercial area? So that was our effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to do yep. that. No, and it was, a, and it's, I'm not, and <coughs> no, worked hard on it. That. I agree. It's just, you know, a lot of thought has, a lot of time has gone by where we can think more, you know, and it's just, uh, and Alan, you have a good point too. The smell of a brewery is just incredible. So <laughs> it's a whole nother concept there. I mean, you're ready to enter. In a downtown street. business. Yeah, street. we're ready to enter First Street with our own special smell. Now we are a second Main Street as we get off exit one. We don't. <laughs> I'd like, to, those. I'd like to comment on that. I think the definitions of death truly helped. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number two, the intent of us here, I think, is to bring in uh, something that fits in with the neighbors and right. with, with all the other, uh, what we're trying to do downtown, make it a place to stop, make a place to shop and go have something to eat. And by these definitions, it's just apparent that two of them don't fit. Right. So I guess that's how I look at it. I mean, you can talk you can talk hours, you can talk all kinds of things, but two don't fit downtown. Which two are they? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, the brewery doesn't, and then yep. the distillery doesn't. I'm not sure I agree with you on the distillery. And, right. and with having a conditional use permit, it gives us that ability to choose which makes sense and what not. Free but. samples and no statutory closing hours? Oof. Well, a couple of things <clears> on, <throat> on that. And... It's, it's not completely clear. I'd need to look at it more carefully if you wanted to do something like this. But that's a, you know, certainly a concern. But I think you could make the argument where the statute is silent on hours. The city cannot adopt ordinances that are in conflict with the statutes. For example, it couldn't adopt more restrictive closing hours than are authorized by statute but if the statute is silent on hours for like a brewery mm -hmm. and a manufacturer then I think you can make the argument we're not contradicting statute we are just um, being more restrictive than the statute and so I think that would be supportable I would want to look into it further with the um, State Department of Alcohol or Division of Alcohol, but if that's well, I still stand by my comment. You want a a, a place, a destination. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want, I mean, you want what we've got around us. And I guess I just feel the definition of the other two, even though I yeah, I mean, I it's totally your that. call. I'm not, you don't know, if you'd rather just, it's just keep not, it clean, not that's the certainly that, you know, we're not. You know, we, it, we don't want a furniture factory right downtown either, and I mean, no. I mean I'm being ridiculous now, no, but it's, right. it's well, kind of the same thing. Well, maybe, or maybe not, you know. It does right. potentially open <clears throat> the door to, hey, you have some so manufacturing downtown, and right. why not something else? So that is a legitimate point. A brew pub, for example, cannot open downtown unless we do something with our ordinance. Or can we... we correct. Correct. Yeah. So... Can we eliminate parts of this ordinance where we wouldn't have certain things like the distillery or for example or or uh the brewery and and have an ordinance where it's just allowable for for example the brew pubs and and or do we have to make an ordinance where it's covering all of this due to the i mean I assume that's why we're looking at all of it i mean that's always been my assumption because it's not like we've had. All of these come to our mm -hmm. forefront either for potential businesses. I think we were trying to trying to catch everything at one, one time. time, rather than something else comes. Now we have to go deal with it again. But so. do we have to write it up where we're allowing something, or can we write it up where we are limiting <clears throat> to what can be placed in downtown while still allowing certain types of businesses? Like, can we limit by saying, I, I don't know if I'm making sense or not, but the brew pub for example i just see that as a possible good fit for downtown if if something were to come because you know it they're usually really good restaurants and and, and bring in a lot of people however like we've explained like we've expressed there's other things we don't so are we able to say well not even a conditional use permit i don't want it to go to another 
future council or plan commission where maybe you know with a conditional use permit you kind of leave it up in the air for who's who's there to make the decision that's why I, I think it's not done that way. I know, it's done but on purpose, so that as times change and, and you can say yes to the right projects and, and I no get, to the wrong. And, uh, and I, I think that. some of the wine, they fall. They don't have a wine brew pub classification, but I've seen wineries in other parts of the country where they're more of a, of a mixing yeah. winery, sure. and they're <clears throat> they're a restaurant and tasting area all in one that would be phenomenal if, yeah, if I, somebody wanted to do something like that downtown. Yeah, I've also will... seen some of the boutique distillers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, I think there's a difference between somebody who's building a large distillery that's going to be producing barrels and barrels of, of pick what type of uh, spirit you want compared to a, a, a boutique one that is doing small-scale production and again, trying to, to fit into the whole mix of things we're trying to do. And that's where I think a, a conditional use permit <coughs> gives us the ass and future councils the ability to look at them project by project and see what makes the most sense for going in the whole mix. I, I agree. I'm not disagreeing with it. I'm, what I'm saying, I, in wineries, I can see like that. Door County has them like that. There's plenty of areas in the state that has that. It's more of... For me, it's more of the brewery concept, and I'm I'm kind of with you on the whole distillery thing as well. It's 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 just a. I get that that's what conditional use permits are for. I I guess I'm more in a position where it's. I don't want to. I, that's just not the future. I I would see. I would like to see for Hudson, and so I, if that's something that future people, future members of plan commission or council would like to see, then. Even in the industrial, or you're talking no. In the industrial, it's fine. Oh, okay. I'm talking okay. downtown. Yeah, specifically to downtown. I don't. I don't. It's just not something I. I'm not clear if you're talking. All. Uh, both winery and, I mean, brewery and distillery and and winery not going downtown in central district, business district. I'm okay with um, winery and brew pub, and yeah, I misspoke when I said winery. I meant and, distillery. And that's where I come back to. I. I can't imagine a distiller wanting to come in. Well, there a was big one, one that wanted to come well, in. Well, there was a the small problem. one wanting to come in. They were talking about having a, their production plant up in the industrial park and having a small boutique one downtown. Which, by state, I believe that could be. They're allowed to do. They have two locations. Yeah, two yeah. locations. A so, brewery is. No, this also, was a distillery. Yeah, yeah, but just a brewery, a brewery also is allowed mm -hmm. one off site. So, one retail. Um, yeah. You know, the. the right project I, I can see good and bad either way you, just by having a you could have a sleazy brew pub just as easily as you could have a, a bad winery or distiller downtown a brewery is a I think a, a full-scale thing that no that doesn't belong in our downtown central business district but I I do think that a, a wine mixing business or a, a, a winery of, of that type or a, a boutique distiller could be a good positive thing. If we can control the hours and, and smell and those other kinds of, of things. Or not to be able to control it. the smell, but to expand on that, I mean, I would like to see it more restaurant based. Mm -hmm. And with the brew pub, I'm just using the brew pub as an example. It's not that I'm stuck on the brew pub concept, mm -hmm. but that's usually the secondary. Yeah, it draws people in, but the restaurant is the base, you know. And I think we've done that with all of our restaurants so far. I mean, it's the food service. The food is the base for why people come in, and the drinking and the is secondary. And you know, they're required to have a restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that, but you know, in a winery, I, I can see that. You know, appetizers, cheeses, cheese flights. I see that. I don't see that in distilleries or breweries. This is my thing: is that downtown is based on sitting down, enjoying the atmosphere, walking on the river, doing whatever you do. It's not based on a drop in, take a try our new bottle of new brew of whiskey, move on. You know, it's it's well, uh, some may or some may not. I agree with you on on the brewery not being appropriate for for downtown on our central business district, but I still think that to leave that option open of a distillery for, for the right type of one 
to go in could make a, a, a really nice facility. I've seen some. Danny, what are you, uh, any thoughts or comments? Mary Claire, were you going to say something? I was just going to ask, are you looking for a vote tonight or action on this or? It's up to you. I would think we'd want to, we've been, we've been uh, working on this for six months. I think we need to make a decision. Do something. Yeah. yeah. So, wait. Kathy, was there something in the state statutes having to do with a brew pub? that a brew pub could only sell beer that it produced and or was produced in the state of Wisconsin? Yes. Yep. Well, that knocks with every beer. Nothing's really <laughs> Well, I mean, you're not going to end up <laughs> with, uh, you're going to end up in a brew pub with their beer or other Wisconsin beers. Correct. Period. Mm -hmm. yep. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure that was clear. The brewer's that permit permit allows that. A, a what? Brewer's permit allows that. A brewer's permit, a brewery, Will allow the sale of their beer plus any Wisconsin made beer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a brewery can operate a restaurant on the <clears> premises <throat> or on one off sale or off site retail premises. So that's why it's hard. You could perhaps, I mean, I don't want to, and you may not want to complicate things. Say, it would only be appropriate in the downtown area if it had a restaurant or the secondary it, outlet yeah not the, primary. Their, not the primary right the you primary. could have the brewery yeah. up in the industrial and the mm -hmm. one off-site retail or vice versa restaurant. But well we, i think you'd need to draft your ordinance to say that that it requires to have a functioning yeah. retail rest, yeah functioning right restaurant. not right. a restaurant license but a functioning restaurant. yeah but i don't want it to be a a, a, a pizza oven and call it a functioning restaurant because that's what some bars have done to you know i mean it won't succeed well <clears throat> your thoughts you have just... any thoughts on it what we've been discussing tonight where well, i mean uh, if you're going to take a draft ordinance to the common council to go to public hearing <coughs> we've got to make a determination on what? you know what type of <clears throat> one of these four um Possible licensing considerations are going to be permitted in the in the commercial areas. If, if you think they're more manufacturing, then they sh probably should be limited to the industrial classifications. I'd like to move ahead, and, and again, the only one I'd like to change then would be the <coughs> brewery would be the primary location couldn't be downtown; it'd have to be the secondary. But because the, all, uh, the brew pub, the distillery, and the winery are controlled by the conditional use permit, I don't see why we, I agree we've we got mm -hmm. a, a review after review to make sure we're doing this thing right. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's checks and balances in the system. So I would say move ahead with those three and put a stipulation on the brewery that it could only be the retail and or secondary outlet downtown, downtown. downtown and not the main Production facility. Production facility, and then I, th I think we get what we want. Catherine, can we make that same distic <coughs> excuse me, distinction for a distillery? <coughs> well, that if they're allowed to have a second location. By I don't see Catherine. anything that refers to that in my oh, okay. write up. The manufacturer having a second off site retail location. I see that only for. Uh, um, brewery okay. and the distiller manufacturer can provide taste samples free of charge mm -hmm. um and also no hours on, on yes and that's i just think um especially in the downtown if there's going to if there's an issue about hours that would be a problem i think i mean yeah if we couldn't if yeah. they couldn't adhere to the same closing hours or the like of, of the other taverns or anything else. But then, does, but does the secondary retail, do they get to live by these rules I don't too? see anything about a secondary retail outlet for a manufacturing permit. Mm -mm -mm, okay. That was, the brewery is allowed that. I was misreading your brewers. Brewers. Brewers, manufacturers. So what are, what are you saying then that, 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 that what are you saying then the manufacturers kind of don't fit the picture? They don't fit that, that, that type of business configuration, at least under the licensing statute. So what we have, we have one change that uh, Fred has proposed 
correct? Yes, that is, that is a motion. Correct. That is a motion. I'll okay. second it. All right. Questions, comments? Yes. One change, meaning? The brewery out of the central business district. But you're saying include the distillery? Well, yes. I, yes, I am. Um, but there has to be, I have to say something, there, there has to be something on the hours. There has to be. I but you see what you're yeah. authorizing. You're authorizing a manufacturing type operation in a downtown area. With the distillery. With the distillery. But huh? through the conditional use permit, we have the. We are. We are not can, inviting uh, Jim Beam to come to Hudson and, and brew whiskey. We want some guy to do a nice boutique type something like that. I guess that's the way I'm Well, the only way you get that is the square footage. Square footage, square footage yeah. then uh, controls that. And somewhere. I have no sense of 3,000 square feet, how that relates to, you know, a yep. manufacturing facility and what they can yep. accomplish in that. Can things be added? You know, in other words, let's say we approve two today. Can things be added on an ongoing basis or when you, once you do a Ordinance. Oh, you can, no, you can change. No, you can. I mean, the ordinance is always subject to amendment, but then you have to go through the process, and it's somewhat time-consuming. Oh, I understand that. But I mean, this is a for complicated. Well, the rules are so different for every yes, one of them. That's why right. I'm saying. I mean, well, let's I mean, two automatically just jump at you and say mm -hmm. okay. Well, why, you know, we can make make a recommendation if the if the planning commission so desires, and for a first reading and. I don't know. Public? Do we need to have a public? Yeah, hearing? public hearing. Mm -hmm. yep. Changes yeah. Changes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. But let's be clear on. So you would want brewery only in the light industrial and general industrial, and with just a certificate of compliance, which means no public hearing. It still is approved by council, but no public hearing on it. To go into the industrial. Industrial or light industrial. But there has to be a public, I mean, I'm still voting no at this point, but there has to be a public hearing. On industrial? Uh, on, no, well, on amending no, no, this no, ordinance. No, she's saying no, this is just, just in the industrial. industrial. Oh, okay, sorry. Just industrial. I'm sorry, Mr. Schlitz. So are we, are we talking right now about brew pub and winery? No, no brewery. No, only, brewery. Talking yeah. only a brewery and a brewery <clears throat> would have to go in an industrial setting. Mm -hmm. if, if, do we don't get... We don't have, a, have we don't have it to have a, a no. public have hearing that. when GM builds a, no. a plant up there or unless there's a zoning change, yeah. right? Right. We do yes. We're not really taking public comment right I now. I understand that. Okay. But I I'd like the opportunity, like Well, we're we're we'll not taking public hearing right now. Okay. Right. We're trying to we're trying to get it organized here. All right. All right. So, I mean, do you want to just keep going down this? Well, I, chart I don't think there's any change. Was I don't there? think there's any yeah. change to what I said, and and I we have a we have a motion in a second. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we'll have discussion on it if anybody has. Yeah, go ahead. Can you just repeat the motion. Yes, the well, motion was to recommend approval of the code. Uh, what's the change that the breweries are to be not permitted in the B two and B three central business district, and the retail secondary outlets would be would be permitted, I guess the decision would have to be made, you know, is that a certificate of compliance or a conditional use permit? I I feel that potentially it'd just be a certificate of compliance. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that only because of what goes along with it for hours and the ability to serve beer or liquor there, right? And I've the hours it can keep where if we had a conditional use permit mm. attached to it it would give the citizenry at the time the ability to to voice a concern if they and, and our neighbors to it to voice a concern if they felt there was one and that needs to be incorporated into the motion that's right, so why I bring it up well then I will amend my motion to incorporate that language okay that's the only reason I'd say put a conditional use permit in well, on want on it but check and balance yes yeah. okay just because of the, the serving of alcohol and the hours that they can keep, I think that the existing neighbors and, and the like should have a, a say in, in that. They were there first. I agree. I agree. Okay. Anybody comments, questions? Danny, anything? No? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay. Yeah. Allow any public comment? Sure. <laughs> you have anybody you want to speak? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think that's fine as far as some elements of it are. Tell us your name, please, and where you're from. I'm Rory O'Sullivan. I'm the attorney for uh, the only brewery in town. Frankly, I think the only brewery, winery, or distillery in town, barring the brew pub downtown. It's fine to say that you can have a brew pub downtown. Brew pub under the statute can manufacture approximately 10,000 barrels of beer a day. Now, we can, or a year. You can romanticize that as much as you want, but I would guess that Rush River Brewery in River Falls <coughs> manufactures about 5,000 barrels a, day, a year. So you're talking about something twice the size of the Rush River Brewery that could conceivably be in the downtown district. And yeah, you've called it a brew pub, but in fact, like what, I mean, for all intents and purposes, certainly in this part of the state, you're talking about a full-fledged brewery. And that's the quantity. When you're talking about effluent and road traffic and the kind of impact it will have on the downtown district, that's what a brew pub can, under the statutes, do. As far as the, uh, the, other, the other concern I have with the ordinance that uh, is proposed is that there's limits on what the brewery uh, can sell. It says uh, in, I think, page two or three of the ordinance that uh, the brewery can only sell uh, sort of limited foodstuffs um, being... This is the bottom of page two. Uh, breweries uh, located in an industrial zone will be allowed limited food service on site. Food service is not to include restaurants or retail food service, but may include food provided at no cost by the brewery or winery through a catering service. I mean, that right there flies in the face of the statutes. I think that's on its face is invalid. Um, I don't think that that would or could, frankly, survive uh, muster uh, in, in the long term. Uh, generally, I just I'm concerned. I would have liked more of an opportunity to speak to Ms. McKintrick and give some feedback. Uh, I very much feel like this is a solution looking for a problem, and y you know you're trying to regulate things that frankly don't even exist in municipality. Like we're regulating distilleries and uh, wineries. Like if you think that a uh, brewery, you have a minute. Is that it then? Yes, you're well, done I'd like for the opportunity minute. to speak to you, and if you want to come contact me afterwards, I'd be delighted to talk to you about this. Can I Thank you. Then? Sure. Are, are you you're the lawyer for the brewery up on the hill? Correct. correct? You're here to speak against <coughs> having an ordinance downtown. No, I'm just asking for the opportunity to have some input into this ordinance. I know, but you're, the way you're speaking, it's is that you don't want to see a brewery or brew pub downtown. I don't have an agenda here. I'm just I don't know why my client can't have some input in this ordinance, which frankly really only affects him and the stone wall or the stone tap. There's there's two businesses in town that this is affecting and we haven't had the opportunity to have any input and yeah i know it's you can say well we're at the preliminary stage it's very early in the process there'll be a public hearing but like this is where the language is made the determinations are made the shape that the ordinance takes now is likely the shape that the ordinance will maintain in the long run and we're just asking for the opportunity to have some input thank you okay anyone else <coughs> okay, let's move on. Discussion and possible action of petition and annexation of 45 acres located east of Carmichael Road and north of Frontage Road, north of I-94 Rock, Rock Island Land Company and Double Play Investments, LLC. The uh, City of Hudson has received a petition for annexation for about 45 acres of land owned by two different owners. Uh, one is uh, the Double Play Investments LLC, and secondly is Rock Island Land Company. best to again explain the location of this property is the northeast quadrant of Carmichael Road 
and Frontage Road. This is Interstate 94. Carmichael extends south of the interstate. The double play investment property is located approximately in this location, uh, 29 <coughs> acres. And, oops, excuse me, it goes here. And then the Rock Island uh, parcel is uh, 16 acres approximately here. The proposal for annexation does not include these six homes that are if the property was in there under the current petition would uh, stay in the town of town of Hudson. So I what we'd like to try to achieve tonight from the planning commission, there's several issues that um, will need to be uh, reviewed in regards to uh, regards to this issue. Four issues, primarily traffic and impact on Carmichael Road and the Carmichael Road intersection. Uh, other issue is the um, cramming. Who has my? I had a memorandum. There we go. Thank you. Um, the. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Four issues of traffic, Carmichael Road, Carmichael Road exit two interchange. Uh, we are waiting for a traffic impact analysis to be presented uh, to the city of Hudson in regards to this issue. A traffic impact analysis uh, also will be provided to the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for review. Uh, under any uh, annexation petition, one of the issues is, is the wastewater treatment plant capacity. We know what the current flows are. We know uh, we've been provided some information on what is anticipated to be the projected flows uh, for development as currently uh, proposed. Uh, city staff has initiated that to review. Stormwater management's a third issue. Uh, stormwater calculation been provided uh, by the consulting engineers on these two parcels. Uh, because stormwater does also affect the I-94 system. That uh, information will also be reviewed by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Uh, there's approximately 22 different parcels within this annexation. Uh, there are existing subdivisions, easements, dedicated streets. Um, and because of that, uh, it makes uh, this issue a little more difficult and complex. Um, our dedicated streets, uh, of which one of them provides access to the six lots that are not included in the annexation petition within this general area. Uh, then there'd be other issues that might be identified by the plant commission or the, or the general public. Uh, so our intent tonight is to, uh, one, is uh, ask the landowners if they want to, uh, to explain what their intent is and the reason for requesting the annexation uh, provide opportunity for plan commission to discuss issues if there's additional issues that they want city staff to review would uh, list those tonight and also the public would have if at the discretion of the plan commission would have an opportunity to voice any concerns or issues that they want city staff uh, to take a look at so at this uh, point mayor it uh, maybe allow the uh, petitioners uh, uh, double play investments and then also Rock Island Land Company to make any comments in regards to their in reason and intent for asking for the annexation certainly gentlemen <coughs> and ladies Mom. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Will Matzik with uh, Kinley Horn and Associates. I'm uh, the uh, engineer on the project, and I have some other uh, folks here with me this evening as well to uh, answer some other questions uh, as you may have them. Um, 
We're really, really early on in the process right now. Uh, we have a submittal in for approximately 45 acres of annexation. Uh, you can see here, uh, Denny kind of gave an outline, but uh, the double play properties here in red, about 29 acres, and then the Rock Island is approximately uh, 16 acres uh, on the uh, east side of Hudson, adjacent to Carmichael Road. And uh, this evening we wanted the opportunity just to uh, introduce the, the project uh, get some feedback. We, I mentioned we're early on and so we're going to be working a lot with staff, uh, the DOT, and wanted to gain your input as well before any decisions are made. Uh, this project is certainly important to the landowners in the City of Hudson, so we wanted to uh, uh, give everyone a, an overview of, of what is initially here proposed. Um, this uh, board here is uh, uh, one of the reasons for uh, the proposed annexation uh, from the, the landowner's perspective is it's an overlay of, of the comprehensive plan and you can uh, notice that the 45 acres are, are generally located in uh, commercial uh, zoning districts and uh, that is what uh, the uh, landowners are proposing and so it would fall in line with the uh, city's comprehensive plan. Clarification, Will, the, the zoning designations are not commercial, they're the future land use designations. Thank are you. Commercial. Sorry about that. Uh, here's uh, an aerial overlay so you can, everyone can see a little bit closer as far as uh, uh, the land area that we're speaking to, uh, generally bound by I 94 uh, Carmichael Road, and then uh, you can see there's a, the frontage road on the uh, south side of the, the project area uh, that road is not proposed to be uh, uh, there's no access proposed as part of this project on the frontage road uh, as Denny had mentioned uh, traffic existing today on Carmichael Road is a little bit of a challenge certainly um, and so no access is proposed on that road because of the close signal spacing that exists today so uh, we are looking to uh, not take access in that location but uh, provide access to the development further up here and right in right out and then uh, match uh, the existing uh, the access at Culver's with a proposed signalized uh, access at that location. Uh, as you may have noticed as well, there, there is access here for these uh, six residential homeowners. Uh, we will be providing an, an alternative access location, which I will get to next. Uh, to, uh, to spur the, the 45 acres of, of uh, initial uh, annexation and proposed commercial <coughs> development, uh, we are uh, looking at a, uh, approximately 155,000 square foot uh, Walmart anchored shopping center. Um, as I had mentioned, we are looking at two proposed access locations here, uh, no access to the frontage road, um, stormwater treatment on the south side of the project area which will uh, provide infiltration and stormwater quality and management for the, uh, for the development area. And uh, there's uh, anticipated to be future parcels here for development, uh, both here on the, uh, on the double play property as well as on the uh, Rock Island property. Um, you'll notice in the, uh, for the uh, residential areas, as I mentioned, we have uh, access here as well as here that will provide access to those folks uh, a 10 acre or a 10 foot high berm and, and landscape area as well initially to, to provide some buffer area screening area and then another um, buffer here in the back which uh, will provide uh, the city and the DOT some flexibility in the event they uh, want to reroute that frontage road but it will provide some additional buffer as well to, uh, to our neighbors as we uh, want to be cognizant of that um, that's uh, kind of an overview of uh, the proposed project, uh, certainly would be happy to answer any questions I can or uh, direct them to the team from a, a traffic perspective or any other questions we can answer. From a traffic, uh, you can only enter uh, heading north. Uh, when you're coming south, you can't enter from that south 
heading south into that one. Correct. correct. Yes, that, that is a proposed right in, right out. Only. Only. Uh, there's a full uh, access with a signal at this location, which would match the uh, signal spacings recommended by the, the DOT folks. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was just going to add that you're still going to be able to make the left turn into the parcel on the west side of Carmichael. So the three-quarter, you'll still be able to make the left going northbound. Is Carmichael right. projected to be widened, or <laughs> you're just going to keep it that way and uh, there, bring there, in a super Walmart? Or? Uh, there are some proposed improvements right now. As I mentioned, we're, we're working with the DOT folks. We have uh, just... Uh, completed a, a draft traffic analysis and we're looking at uh, several improvements to Carmichael, uh, some turn lane improvements uh, uh, down here at, at this intersection here, uh, as well as a, an additional through lane. Uh, this red here kind of delineates all the proposed improvements and then we're proposing to uh, basically connect all the signals so they'll communicate better uh, from the <laughs> north end of the project to the south end. And so the timing will be improved. And so with the project, we're looking at uh, essentially uh, uh, out to 2027 having the same level of service that exists today. So um, we're looking to, to mitigate those, uh, mitigate the traffic, and we'll continue to work with the, the city and the DOT on that. And the frontage road you mentioned improvements if the city wishes to make improvements? Or is that something that you guys would take on? You know, the, the frontage road down here, we're not proposing any access or to that frontage road. Um, and so uh, our intent with the project is to, to leave access to the frontage road alone. We're not pulling any access from it. And so uh, uh, I mentioned this area here. Longer term, the DOT is looking at access and the Carmichael uh, interchange. And so that right. would provide some flexibility. We don't know what they That was my next do. question. So the Carmichael corridor is being looked at by the DOT. I sit on that as well. Sure. Committee. So how does that affect, how, how, I don't know how long that process is going to take. None of us ever do when it involves right. DLT, but how, how is that going to affect this? How are, are, you're working with them, but. We've certainly had uh, initial meetings with those folks. We're going to have more meetings and more discussion with them. I know they're looking at some potential uh, interchange improvements, but, you know, we'll, we'll need to continue to talk to those folks. Uh, what we're proposing here is to do, uh, improvements to the road that will allow it to continue to function with the uh, 45 acres of development. Please understand. I know it's very. We're, we're just trying to identify issues. Right. We'll get into the nuts and bolts and all the details of the Wisconsin DOT and the city staff uh, as we go forward. We haven't received the traffic in. We've asked for it. We haven't right. received it yet. Once we receive it, then that process will restart. So. Well, I respect that it's very preliminary. It's just. I think we're all, everyone in this room, no matter how we feel about whether this comes in or not, is that Carmichael is an issue that we've been dealing with and to bring something like that in, whether I agree with it or not, is not the issue here, is that we need to be very conscious of how any project, whether it's sure. Walmart or I don't care what it is on that corner, were to come in. I, I, I agree with you uh, from the perspective of traffic. I mean, the landowners nor Walmart would want Carmichael Road to, to be failing. I mean, that does not help their business. That will not help their project either. So uh, we, we certainly are uh, working through that. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're, we're early on. Uh, Brandon, our traffic engineers here, we're, we had just uh, uh, wrapped up the uh, uh, initial report here that will be submitted to the city and uh, the DOT to continue our dialogue. And, and I, I would say just from a traffic perspective, when we're looking and doing the collaboration with um, WSDOT looking at interchange improvements, I mean, we're going to have to do things that are generally in compliance with what they're looking at doing in terms of tying the two things together. So right. as they look forward and look at adding capacity down at the interchange through a variety of options, and I've heard what some of those options are, Right. Uh, I mean, that's generally long term going to do a lot of things that are anticipated to be better. I mean, some of the issues that you're seeing <coughs> really on the north side, some of it's just tied to some of the challenging signal operations um, at the north uh, frontage road. Yeah, uh, I don't disagree with that statement. And, but. Well, and I know I'm not pointing, yeah. I'm kind of pointing out the obvious, but it has to do with the way the signal split phase for northbound and southbound. And so some of the bene benefits of some of the proposed changes is to change that so that can operate a lot better. Because when you can only go northbound, 
And southbound, you can't go concurrently. You just kill operations on an arterial. And so that's one of the things that are, that's included in the report that we'll leave, and we're going to be distributing copies to WISDOT here tomorrow. And my other question, since it's preliminary and we're uh, talking about the roads, is a, street, is a stoplight the only option that you're looking at for that next, for the back, the most uh, northern entrance there? I mean, are you looking at other options? As, as compared to like a roundabout or something? Yeah, I mean. Well, everybody knows I'm not a fan of roundabouts. I'm just saying that we got like 50 stoplights on Carmichael. I'm just asking if we have other options to look at or not. I, I mean, based on, based on the volumes along the corridor, the traffic. I, like I mean, the traffic signal is going to be warranted. Um, I think based on the character of the corridor, to install an alternative traffic control device like roundabouts, which you know I've been involved in in a variety of places across the country, it just really doesn't fit with the context. And um, I mean, you generally don't go through you know four signals and then hit a roundabout. roundabout. Uh, yeah, I get that. I'm now, just, if you have four in a row, okay. I don't want four in a row. I just want to make sure we have all our options in front of us as we move forward. Since you're doing the traffic study, I just yeah. before it. You know, we ask that later, and then all of a sudden we ask the question, and the study's already done. How are you uh, planning to reroute the that homes that stay in there? Um, well, we'll have the two different access locations. Uh, so this, what's it, what's these would be proposed to be built first before uh, that road would be removed, essentially. Uh, so they would have uh, access, and we'd have to certainly work with the homeowners to phase that properly so we get them sufficient access. That will be important during construction, absolutely. Would you consider those roads that you're showing on there, would you call that your frontage roads, or is there any... Uh, potential or chance that other roads that are more parallel to Carmichael could go in at some point, or is this what you sh the, the, These would be, but w what we would propose, generally speaking, is you know, the, the frontage road to Carmichael, yes. Uh, you know, this location here, likely in the future, would, would continue on and, and head to the north uh, to provide access and act as a reliever to, to Carmichael. One of the key issues on <coughs> that north-south route orientation is providing enough separation between Carmichael Road and that frontage road, you have stacking, lane maneuvering, and so forth. You gotta, uh, you've got got a minimum distance, and I think they're, I mean, that's been looked at, so, I mean. The other thing I would, I'll be anxious to hear about is you said you're adding lanes north of the bridge. And if, if, correct me if I heard that wrong, but I thought I heard that. They're adding, adding I lanes to lane that. I mean, and I guess what that means to me is there's some restriction there at some point. The bridge is only so wide, and if you go from five lanes to seven, and I don't know if it's a funnel or if it's a, the spout, I don't know which one it is, but um, I'll be curious to hear what you come uh, at. Well, I mean, what, the, the one area where we're looking at adding in a lane is to insert a turn lane and do some redesignations on the south side or northbound approach. And so by doing some striping and some widening here, you can have more of the lane continuity that would tie to that existing bridge will carry in that through traffic farther than north. What the left turn lane does is right now you have a left turn lane and then you have a through left lane mm -hmm. and a through lane. Mm -hmm. By getting it into two exclusive left turn lanes and two through lanes, that's what allows you to get rid of that split operation. And it'll, yes. I mean, that's split operation in terms of a traffic engineer in my exciting world is, I mean, we almost always avoid it. Oh, no, we don't like it. it doesn't want, yeah. We don't like it here either. It's not, oh, yeah, it's not the best. No. Right. Okay, well, no, I just said I didn't know that. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Well, we appreciate everybody's time and yeah, thank you really. look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thanks. Are there issues that uh, Pine Commission members want city staff to review? I just want to make sure that, um, I mean, I don't, I, I'm sure that people, um, there's a lot of people out here and they're, I'm sure they're concerned about a lot of things involving their homes. Uh, I, I want to make sure that the, if, if this does go through with that, we make sure that there's a good buffer, I mean, adequate. I mean, I know that we're really good about that, but we're, you know, this is 
it's not like it's going in where Uline was, where we're buffering it from a business park. This is, you know, a little different situation. And I think we need to be um, respectful of that and conscious as well. Does any, anybody uh, uh, know the size of the existing Walmart store? What the square footage of the Walmart store is today? We think it's a 65,000 square foot mm -hmm. store. So you're going to add about 90,000 square feet. Okay, Fred, you had... Well, I just, I want to make a general comment. I, I hope there's something that's a benefit to the city of Hudson by potentially allowing this to happen. I mean, I hope it brings good jobs, people buy houses, and the positives outweigh the negatives in the sense that it doesn't cost Hudson to host a super Walmart or whatever's going in there. And there is benefit to the Hudson if they're for whatever is going in. That would be my concern: is that the city of Hudson benefits from all this, whatever it shakes out at the end of the day. If it's positive, great. If it costs us money, if it costs us problems, if it changes crime, if it ruins that intersection, the, the issues that we're all kind of aware of. Oh boy. Uh, on that note, just say, hang on a second. Sorry. Uh, Pat, you had a question? No. Okay, no. yes. No. Okay, uh, the elephant in the room, maybe or not, is, and we have whether, I know we probably don't have control over this, but what about the old Walmart? It's not, what, what's going to happen with that? That's not our issue. It's not our issue, but <clears throat> everyone asks a question. If, you, if they, the rumor is around town that it might be coming, and everybody who's heard it has asked me, well, what's going to happen with the old Walmart? I understand that we can't control it, but... We got an old Perkins, we got an old this, we got... They may be prepared to answer that question. Well, I'll, I'll try. My, sure. my name is Debbie Tomchik, I'm the attorney for Walmart. Can you uh, use yes. the microphone so the people in the audience at home can hear? Yes, we, we lease that store. Um, so we have a limited time frame, actually. We actually lease the store, we don't own it. Um, and there's no place to expand. We've tried to look at the expansion options for that site, and it's just not feasible. There's nowhere to go. So uh, we've concluded that we need to find a new home for the store. We've actually been looking for quite a while <laughs> to try to make this happen. Um, so we'll continue to work with uh, our landlord to find a new tenant. Um, we have a pretty good success rate in having done that. Um, but we also have a limited time frame there, so we won't be staying there for, for the long term either. I understand. But at least I know that you're look, helping or trying to... Yeah, we, we absolutely would. I'm just tired of seeing empty boxes in, in town, you know. Actually, Walmart has one of the biggest real estate departments in the country called Walmart Realty. They market all of those sites uh, through the, the best brokers, through an on-site, online system, um, and they've got a pretty good track record of having fun retenanting for those sites. So, Thank And you've you. got a great market here, and that always helps as well. Thank you. What are some of the types of businesses that they've filled them with? Uh, let's see. The last two that I've worked on, it was actually a J.C. Penney was one, a real small one. Um, one of them was actually a church, believe it or not, and actually the, the mayor of that community invited the church to come to that location because they'd been looking in the corridor for quite a while um, and needed a new home. Um, a lot of retail businesses, those are the two that come most to my mind. That was just recently in Greenfield and one in Menominee Falls in Wisconsin. And now one of them, actually the, the most recent one was that Walmart vacated in Waukesha, uh, they retenanted themselves for a neighborhood market, which is a grocery store only. How long is your lease for? Um, I, I believe we have about three years, but don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. And we usually have some flexibility with landlords, but it, we've been looking for quite a while to try to retenant in this space and, and to try to find a way to better serve our customers. Um, we're, we're underserving our customers in that store today, and so we need to do a better job. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Your, uh, where's some, uh, I don't know if you want to open sure. the public. Uh, sure. Alan, or Absolutely. There was some comments uh, received from Randy and Marcus Schmidt, 710 Glenna Drive, Tim Andrew Dreyer, 712 Glenna Drive, and John and Deanne DeGraff, 730. Those are residential properties located east of uh, the double plate property, uh, just a number of issues such as uh, storm drainage, uh, wind drive of ground wells, uh, overall effects on wells and septic systems, additional noise, 
lighting disturbances, dumpster, raw food, rodent considerations, commercial closeness to residential, uh, there's a crime issue there, value of uh, property values, increased traffic, uh, uh, big box of, uh, adjacency is single family residential, uh, could there be possibility of multifamily use, berms, trees, vegetation, Bigger setback or location of building placement, 24-hour activity of big box store, uh, lose township country feel, Walmart brings a different demographic population in close to residential area, existing Walmart building will be empty, another grocery store, is it needed, do you kill current businesses and family fresh, so those are listed. Anyone else in the audience would like to speak? There's Two? Yes, sir. You could tell us your name and. Yeah, I'm Tom Moody. I live at uh, 429 Jack Pine, which is also basically right there. Um, along with basically those comments that, that were just made as it relates to storm runoff, having grown up in the South where Walmart is very prevalent, I know for a fact they restock all night, and that's when the trucks come in. The, the noise disturbance overnight will be massive and ongoing and constant, regardless of the size of berms that are built, and it will frankly destroy the property value of the six homes that are listed there. The, there's roughly four or five homes right there on Glenna uh, that it will destroy, and three roughly on Jack Pine, um, because we are all so very close uh, in relationship that we, we will no longer basically have homes because at our back door will be Walmart unless you build a 75 foot burn um, and again the the storm runoff because we are all on well is a massive massive concern to what uh, what we're going to end up with because of the salt that will be there and on and on and on <coughs> so and I think those need to be looked at very very significantly so thank you yep. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, my name is Jim Anderson. Um, I'm one of the uh, partners in Double Play. But I'll just, I, I thought I should get up and say something. I grew up in North Hudson. I'm a longtime Hudson guy. And um, just to provide maybe some background perspective, because I, you know, there's a lot of concern about access, the roads, uh, Wisconsin DOT. And I've been involved in this thing for, oh, I don't know, at least 10 years, maybe 12 or whatever. And um, if it's okay to just kind of go back sure. a little bit, um, the you know all those vacant lots, which I, I think there's 25 of them if I remember right, um, you know it was an old housing development. A developer tried putting them together, um, and in fact, in that 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 first uh, right in right out right where the curb cuts got put in back in the 90s, I think you know that was going to be the original in out, and of course. Um, you know, traffic's developed and everything else. So, um, you know, the entrance got moved down to right across from the golf course. And um, I guess big picture, one of the things um, that I want everybody to know is, um, you know, um, Erickson Oil Products bought some of those homes back in the early 90s. Um, Dave Erickson was a personal friend of mine, so I want getting involved, even though I'm not a real estate guy. Uh, and um, one thing that was always important to us, and, and I'll say this till the day I die, is um, Hudson, I care about Hudson and how it develops. Um, we have purposely not uh, pursued deals that didn't seem like they made sense, where somebody was just trying to do something, whatever, you know. Back before the economy crashed, you know, um, Opus came in, tried putting that whole 63 acres, I think, together, um, our 30, the 17, and then those three homes up there uh, on Deerhaven. And, of course, that all fell apart when anything crashed, and they were going to put a, um, a uh, super target in there. And, um, um, Again, you know, kind of big picture. Whether this happens or not, and, and I really mean this, and I, you know, people have known me for a long time. Um, if it, if it happens, it has to make sense from our standpoint, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Um, but but if 
that land is going to be developed. Somebody has to start it. And that's been the 800 pound gorilla, quite honestly. Um, it's, there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure work. You know, it's kind of getting off the dime and getting the ball rolling, right? And um, uh, it's gonna take a very unique <coughs> partner, whatever you wanna call it, with the city and I hope I'm not speaking out of term with the Walmart folks because I'm, I'm just me. But, um, uh, you know, it's going to take a very unique um, partner to do, do it right if it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, then okay. You know? um, and a couple of things that I, you know, that I, that I think um, might have been left out, and if I'm saying this right, um, so the entrance, you know, got moved north. Okay, because of the stacking issues and all the let's say problems, you know, kind of on the on the south side of the the highway, and I live on the south side, so I deal with all that. Um, and um, there's a lot of infrastructure work that has to happen, whether it's on Carmichael, whether it's um, down down in that 25 acres. Um, the DOT is involved, obviously. And uh, what they're going to do with that frontage road, you know, nobody really knows. But in their longer range plan now, you know, and they've talked about this for probably 15 years about vacating that. Um, that may or may not get vacated. And one of the things the Walmart folks didn't say, but I think it's important, is they've agreed to um, uh, set aside land going around the back, if I'm right about that. Um, you know, where, where uh, the entrance would come in across from the golf course, um, you know, go into the six homes, and then they're setting aside land and agreeing not to do anything with it so that someday if the DOT wants to get rid of that, that road can, you know, wrap around and, and, and go around. So there's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts and a lot of stuff going on in the background that I just wanted to make sure everybody knew about. And there's, a lot, there's been a lot of thought going into this for a long, long, long time. And um, <coughs> um, kind of back to my original point, as a kid that grew up in Hudson, and by the way, speaking of the high school, um, I, was, I graduated in 75, so I was the last guy, or the last class in the old high school, and we moved in the middle of the year. And, you know, it was the first graduating class out of the new high school out there. And, of course, everything's changed, but that's what happens with Hudson. I mean, we used to go target practice up, you know, across the highway up there, and nothing was up there other than Hudson up. So, hey, keep on playing, um, Jim, please. No, I will, but, but I, I, <laughs> seriously, and I'm saying this from my heart. I mean, I care about Hudson, and I want it. Whatever happens or doesn't happen, it's got to happen right. And um, the... You know, the, the Freedom folks, the Erickson Oil folks, and me, um, who have owned this land for a long, long time, close to 20 years now, um, you know, we're solidly behind doing it right, and if, it if it's not right, we don't want, you know. Thank you. So I just. Thank you. Okay, so thank you guys. But yep. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yeah, let's see. Uh, my name is Mike Brusky. I'm here tonight with my wife, Betty, and we're one of the, uh, actually we own three of the six lots that we saw in the diagram before. Uh, there's kind of a horseshoe proposal to be annexed, and in the center of that horseshoe is where our homes are. And yeah, I'm not against progress, I'm all for it, but I, I do have a couple of concerns that I'd like to lay out there tonight. Uh, the first is, with the discontinuance of Greenbrier Road, and the proposed uh, new access into our property, it's going to come down the whole, what is our backyard now, and then come across the whole south side of our property. Um, and with all that traffic, I mean, it, it, it's going to be a, a totally different thing. So I'm concerned about that. And then we haven't really been privy to any discussions up to this point uh, that may have happened with the city council or the, or the planning commission, so I don't really know. This is our first hearing. Right. Okay, okay. But uh, I guess, you know, I wouldn't mind talking to, um, what did you say your name was? Jim. Jim, Jim. yeah. My name is Lee Press. Yeah, for example, <laughs> you know, I haven't met Jim before. Oh, it's the gentleman from Rock Island. Is anybody here from, how do you do? 
Okay. Well, yeah, so I think, you know, that being said, uh, I'd like to, we need some time to figure out our options, basically. So that would be my point in a nutshell is we need to figure out how this is going to impact us and get some good advice and, you know, maybe we can all work together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is uh, Dave Sebast. I live in Hudson. And, uh, Where you do know, you live, Dave? Uh, Towns Valley. And uh, you're in the township. Yes. Okay. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't have anything against uh, Walmart. They're here now, and uh, I assume they'll probably stay. Uh, my question is, is it sounds like the store is going to be much larger than the current store, and I guess my question is, do we need something that large when you can drive ten miles and uh, and find it in uh, Woodbury? Um, Progress will happen, and something will, will go in there. There's no doubt about it, but I guess I'm just looking for something that fits kind of the small-town character of, of Hudson. Thank you. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Well, Kathy's here tonight, and she did write a memorandum on discontinuance. <coughs> uh, there is a pot. I mean, if a lot of ifs involved in, in this particular issue, but uh, <coughs> if the property would be annexed, uh, we do not have jurisdiction to discontinue roadways outside the city of Hudson. So if the property would be annexed, there would be a requirement for, potentially a requirement for discontinuance of the pub ded dedicated public streets. And Catherine's written a memo, maybe she would want to review just briefly in regards to what that process is. And the reason Kathy and I are bringing this forward, we would rather bring it forward now to let the Planning Commission know that there is this possibility rather than wait and then uh, potentially a annexation occurs, then this issue of discontinuous becomes before. So we we like to lay it out on the table now so that Planning Commission is aware of of what that process is required so yeah it's just obviously their development plans or proposal shows discontinuing those roads and that's uh, I guess it's very pretty simple it's either by petition or by council initiation um, like I said in the memo there may be legal issues regarding a petition process um, whether those how those six lot owners figure into any requirements for the petition that would um, and on city initiation that goes through a public hearing process the city has <coughs> to go through that process there's no agreement you know you can't agree to discontinue a street by the same token you're not obligated to so approval of the annexation does not mean that you're obligated or the city would be obligated to discontinue those streets I think the city just needs to be aware that that's their plan and would need to make decisions um, at the time based on the best interests of the city so um, I guess if you have questions and of course you can't deprive access so they <coughs> I mean they they're aware of all that and we just, like Denny said, wanted you to know that there could be some legal issues involved. And those, if there were to be an annexation, that would probably be spelled out in an annexation agreement um, in terms of who's going to <coughs> bear the cost of those, okay. which would be the developer. So is that something that you'd want us to consider action on tonight in no 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 no, 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 or no, just, oh, uh, no. it's uh, just one of the issues purchase. informational yeah purchases. information okay. only just one of the issues involved in this okay. annexation that but what you're saying is you'll identify that stuff up front and then it will be part of yes mm -hmm. whatever right. happens okay. Yep. okay as it should be mm -hmm. anything else Danny do you have anything else for this I uh, just uh, appreciate the comments from uh, the landowners uh, Walmart uh, you know, property owners in that general area. The general process of annexation is is that there's a number of issues that need to be 
identified, discussed, uh, including the City of Hudson and Wisconsin Department of Transportation. Uh, during, the, uh, during that process, uh, there's a matter of negotiations. This is purely a proposal. <coughs> we haven't agreed to anything at this point. Everything's up for negotiation. Um, the consideration is, is that a, if an annexation is recommended by the Planning Commission, perhaps with certain conditions or considerations to be uh, made by the Common Council, uh, the recommendation goes to the Common Council. The annexation requires a two-thirds vote because it's an ordinance consideration. The process after that is rezoning of properties potentially and then the consideration of development plans potentially. So annexation does not set the zoning. Annexation does not set the approvals of the development plans. A lot of those steps have to proceed in a procedure spelled out by state statute. So we're only at the first step of this process, and there's a lot of considerations. Uh, next meeting, um, probably because we've only received a traffic impact, I, it may be a month out before we have the next meeting because staff has now got to really sit down and really start analyzing a lot of the information that's been provided to us. I mean, we could have a meeting in two weeks, but perhaps we wouldn't be ready for this particular mm -hmm. discussion. I think you'd want staff to get through it sufficiently that we can start, um, uh, you know, really addressing the issues uh, to come before the Planning Commission. So with that, that's my closing comments, and okay. I don't know if the, planning, if the mayor's got any. No, oh, I, I think it's pretty clear. <coughs> All right, let's move on to the next item. We'll, uh, <coughs> Next item on the agenda is discussion for possible action proposed telecommunication antennas on Carmichael Road water tower and equipment building. Well, the proposal by Verizon, um, and unfortunately the consultant was not able to make it tonight. Uh, this is the water tower at Carmichael Road. Uh, what they're proposing is to place 12 antennas on the very top of the water tower and then also to construct a equipment building on the ground level. The equipment building, there was a picture in the, the brick facility uh, that was uh, being requested by the water utility. Um, I've had, thank you. I've had conversations with uh, Tim Crusoe, water utility director, in regards to this. Um, uh, we really see no uh, specific concerns on the proposal by Verizon as far as the number of antenna, height of antenna, type of antenna, the colors, they'd be painted similar colors to the water tower, the equipment buildings, a uh, brick building. Uh, the, there's three things that uh, we'd like to recommend <coughs> approval of this with three contingencies. One is that the Water Utility Commission approve the plans they're still somewhat in process of reviewing it. The city attorney will review the lease arrangement with Verizon in regards to lease. Uh, you know, there's a lease, there's income that comes in to the water utility because of the placement of these uh, antenna and, and the equipment facility. And then third is that Tim and I uh, have a concern on uh, landscaping, uh, not necessarily to totally block out the building because it is a brick building, but to mitigate uh, and just provide some additional screening so it's not quite as visible to the general public as they drive along Carmichael Road. So we're recommending approval of those three contingencies. So moved? Yep. Is uh, there, let me ask a question. Is, is there a second? First? Second. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, have we been approached by anybody in the past for an antennas on that? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've got antennas on it now. Okay. Yeah. This is very, this is very typical. We've. Uh, the amount of revenue generated by the water utility for antennas on our water towers is pretty substantial. Okay. So there's other towers already up? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And there can be more now the, Well, that's, that's the reason they come to the Planning Commission because we want to make sure when this whole process of, of um, looking at our public water towers to be, to be <laughs> sites for these antenna. One was to try to reduce the number of independent antennas. You know, I mean, water towers are high, so we try to utilize the height of those to, to, to gain access. Mm -hmm. um, 
but it also generates revenue for the water utility and a very, a very significant amount of water or revenue. Uh, but also, the reason it comes to plan commission is that we're kind of the independent body to look at this and say, hey, maybe you got too much or, so you, we don't want the towers to be overpopulated or congested with this type of equipment either. So the purpose of the coming to planning commission is really kind of that independent body to take a look at it and make sure that it works within within those considerations. And you're comfortable with the plan yes. as you laid yes. it out. These antenna will be on the very top of the of the tower. So they'll add about eight feet of height to the tower. My comment would be to maximize income off of a situation like that. Why not? <laughs> yeah. yep. That's why, why not? I was wondering why it was that <coughs> planning commission was Well again the, the yeah. check and okay, balances we want to make sure the water utility is not going <laughs> crazy on us and you know all of a sudden we Still got functions you know. okay any other questions we have who's, a motion who's and a second. motion and second on that Pat, motion i seconded correct yep 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 just any comments checking. questions <laughs> all in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed motion carries any other business for informational purposes or for upcoming agendas our next meeting is scheduled for February 27th. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> We're adjourned. Thank you very much.